Hey YouTubians, what's up? I'm another XYZ and welcome back to another Club Banger. Today we're hanging out in r slash choosing beggars, the place where beggars get particularly choosy. So let's go ahead and hop right on in. This first post is by the user Saddlecakes. The title of the post is, even just a 20 would be great. This was from a couple weeks ago. I'm from New Haven and was back in town visiting family. For those who don't know, Yale is in New Haven, but I myself am a townie. I go into the downtown campus area a lot because it's got cute coffee shops to sit and read in. I had $19 in my checking account, but since it was a nice day, I wanted to sit outside at my fave spot and have a coffee and a treat and get down to $14. There's a lot of homeless people in New Haven, and you usually see the same people. I'm not judging or looking down on them. I'm very critical of Yale, and it's shame to see people suffering on the stoop of a university that hoards millions and gets gigantic endowments and is non-profit yet collects rent from buildings they own and lease out to businesses. But anyway, I generally give a couple bucks, especially since the cafe I solidly frequent has outdoor seating. They'll ask for a little help while they walk by, and if I have something, I'll give it. So a disclaimer, I don't look down on it, I don't scoff at it, I'm not superior to it. So this woman is walking through the place and asking people for change. Someone gives her the bag of bagels he just bought, and she says thanks. Next, she walks up to me, again, the me with $14 in my checking and no cash. Hey, can you spare something? I'm sorry, I don't have any cash. That's okay, there's an ATM up the street, I can walk with you. I'm sorry, I can't do that. There's an ATM just right there. I'll go with you and you can withdraw something, even just a 20. Me in my head, just a 20? No, sorry, I can't do that. Well, why don't we walk in here, points to cafe, and you buy me a meal. Ma'am, I don't have enough money in my account, okay? Choosing beggar then gives me an absolutely pissed off look and walks off. Like, lady, I'm not a Yaley, and even if I was, I'm not going to head down to the ATM with you to withdraw just a $20 bill. The thing that really grinds my gears is immediately before that, someone just gave this lady a bag of bagels, and that's significantly less than $20 worth of bagels, unless these are some real premium high-end bagels that this person is buying and giving away, which I highly doubt they are. Why does this person seem so stuck on the monetary value of $20? And I mean, if you have money to spare and it makes you feel good, then hey, why not? Give them a $20 bill, but in this person's case, it just wasn't feasible because all they had to their name was $14. And just like this person said, I'm in the same spot. I don't think that I'm above anybody or looking down or scoffing at people who need to beg for money to live. Um, it's just in this case, this person was definitely a bit too picky and fixated on getting $20, which I'm not 100% sure why they were so set on the $20 amount. This next post is by the user Optical Radio Gaga. The title of the post is a throwback choosing beggar involving a startup moving business. This was probably four-ish years ago. My friend and I decided we wanted to start a business. We didn't know where to start, so we bought a pickup truck and decided we'd do some labor gigs for people. Most of them involved just simple moves and also some landscaping stuff. Enter the choosing beggar story. Me and my partner are seasoned vets at this point, been doing it for one or two weeks and we find another simple move gig on Craigslist. We arrive. Everything seems to be hunky-dory. The price had been agreed upon before anything even started. We were smart that way, at least. She tried to haggle our rate down, but we were charging very little compared to real professional moving companies, so there was no reason to complain. We got really good at our craft. We packed up our pickup truck like fucking Tetris. Everything this woman wanted moved was in the truck, and so well put together. It took us a good 30 to 45 minutes. So we're ready to leave to the other place and notice this woman is on the phone. We're wondering what the holdup was. She's talking to her brother and she seems to be distraught. As we approach the car, she hands over the phone to my partner. This guy is arguing with us to lower the price. My partner has the most annoyed and irritated look on his face, hangs up the phone, hands it back to the lady, and looks at me to say, Let's take this shit out of the truck. So we very carefully unpack the truck and leave it in her driveway. We wasted a couple hours to not make any money, but I always respected my partner's call on that one. Principles over money. 
She pleaded with us at the very last minute. No, no, it's okay. We'll play. Please. We didn't let her dumb brother fuck us. That's definitely one of the things that sucks when you're first getting started. I've done freelance video stuff in the past, and I've had people try and haggle the price after I've already shot video, which is why I tend to take money up front. People get a little bit weirded out about that. I tend to only take 50% up front and then 50% upon delivery, but people will do stuff like this, where you finish the project, and then afterwards, uh, they'll be like, no, 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 man, I'm not gonna be able to uh, pay you that much. I know we agreed on it, but uh, I'm gonna go ahead and take C-backsies on that, which is not cool. And I mean, these people didn't get all the way finished, so they didn't move it to the person's house, get all their stuff unpacked, and then they tried to get lowballed, so they still had kind of an out on this one. It just sucks that this person was trying to take advantage of them when they were clearly, like, from what I could see, their rates were going to be a lot lower than some of the other professional movers in their area. So I feel like they were already giving them super low rates, so why would you even try and haggle with them? It's just a silly, stupid move. Some is looking for a place that can accommodate 60 to 70 people, in a venue where most can sit, and with adequate parking availability. In a space exclusive to their event, special drinks, it should provide space so outside noise or activities are not a detriment to our programs. We would like them to provide microphone, video screens, and projector for presentations. We want them to commit to availability for the same night every month except December. At present, that is the last Monday of each month. The time frame needed is 5.30 p.m. to 7.15 p.m. We'll serve a variety of adult beverages for purchase at a reasonable cost. Optional. The availability of snack or food items for purchase that the place can sell and make money too. Let me know if you or anyone else might be interested. This is a green environmental group that can't afford to pay and needs the space donated. Thanks, Jan. And now, while I don't think it's unreasonable for them to be looking for a space that somebody will provide on a monthly basis for something that seems very charity-like, so like a green environmental group. So looking for a venue that will provide a space for an organization like this monthly doesn't seem too unreasonable. The thing that's the most unreasonable here is they have to provide microphones, video screens, projectors for presentations. They gotta commit to the same day every single month. Uh, it's gotta be quiet enough so it's far enough from the road and all that. For me, that's where things start to get really, really unreasonable because if you're looking for a venue that's into your cause and wants to donate that space to you, it's likely that this venue doesn't have all the things that you're looking for. And maybe sure, you'll find somebody later on down the road. But I don't know, man. It just seems like this is a little bit too much of a request for somebody looking for donated space. Artists, please stop asking things from people without offering any value. It's never going to stop, but... I just never will understand the bombarding of people with links to your Spotify or Facebook page or whatever in their DM. Why would some random person listen to your Spotify link? Have we talked before or established rapport? Do you post interesting content that engages people? Have you engaged with the things that I posted? Even if you swear your music is the best thing I will ever hear, if you just drop an unsolicited link to something in my inbox without saying anything else, I will 99% of the time Never listen to it, and you'll probably get unfriended because you're spamming. If you take the time to at least offer some value, people will start to give a shit, I promise. I think it's interesting that this guy mentions uh, Spotify links. I probably had people send me more SoundCloud links than anything else. People just aspiring to be great musicians and things like that. Hey, I respect the hustle, but this person is totally right. If you just start sending randos DMs with a link to whatever page it is that you're trying to get people to go to, 99% of the time, like this person said, it will not elicit any type of click or interest, right? When it comes to music and things like that, it's either got to be something that I've stumbled across myself or a friend has recommended to me. And of course, I've always got to give a little bit of love to people that I know personally who are trying to make it out there in music and things like that. So I'll go listen to their stuff and recommend it to my friends. But this person is totally right. Spamming people with links doesn't usually result in any sort of interest. Good afternoon. Big Red Line is a small digital media startup company with four years officially in business. We are a growing business who desires reliable, trustworthy, and passionate individuals who understand in order to grow, some services will have to be done pro bono to build the brand of the company. The founder and CEO is looking for an assistant who can help with time and daily management, scheduling of meetings, correspondence, and note-taking. 
we are looking for a responsible individual to provide personalized secretarial and administrative support in a well-organized and timely manner. You will work on a one-to-one -one basis on a variety of tasks related to the founder's working life and communication. This position is more of an unpaid internship, but as the company grows, so will the compensation. With knowing this information, if you are still willing to grow with a team that will defeat all odds and build a platform to support talent, artists, and fellow entrepreneurs, email us back and we can move forward with the onboarding process. Thank you for considering Redline. We hope you have a productive day. I'm going to be honest, this doesn't seem like the most unreasonable thing I've ever seen. I think they probably should have just called it an unpaid internship right out the gate just so they didn't set any expectations that they were ever going to be paid for something like this. But when it comes to like media startups and stuff like that, at least where I'm at, this isn't the most unreasonable thing I've ever heard of. It's just the fact that they're saying like, hey, one day we might pay you for this, I think sets a really bad expectation because if they're this early in the game, who knows whether or not it's going to turn into money at all. It could turn into something where this company implodes on itself. I mean, who knows? I think it would just be more honest if they had just said it was an unpaid internship. All right, y'all. Thank you for joining me in r slash choosing beggars. And like always, if you have any suggestions for any subreddits, drop them in the comment section down below. And like at the end of every one of my videos, no glove, no love. Peace.